This is Joe from Dark Arts Astrophotography, and welcome to my first ever video tutorial. This tutorial will be on the topic of stacking deep sky images using Adobe Photoshop. Stacking is a very important part of astrophotography as it allows us to take several short exposures and combine them to give the equivalent integration time of taking a much longer exposure. Uh, when images are stacked, uh, pixel data found in each image will be amplified, whereas random pixel data, which is the digital noise present in all high ISO digital images, will be reduced. The end image, the end result rather, is an image with more detail and less background noise. For Windows, the main tool people have been using for years is a free program called Deep Sky Stacker. It's a very, very powerful image uh, uh, stacking tool. It has multiple uh, benefits, whereas it will analyze images for quality, sort them by quality, reject bad images. It allows you to add calibration frames, which is another topic altogether, to reduce noise even further. And it's it's just a great tool altogether. It was uh, its development was abandoned. It's an older 32-bit tool, so it's not ideal in you know, newer versions of Windows. It's still available if you use Windows, and you might want to look at using this instead of this method. Personally, I actually quite, kind of like this method here, and I found that in some cases, I actually get better results stacking only light frames, which is the actual pictures, and no calibration frames in Photoshop than I do in Deep Sky Stacker. I'm not sure why exactly, but it seems to work for me, so I, I actually like doing it this way. Now, for Mac users, your choices are far more limited when it comes to uh, astrophotography tools. Uh, there are no free tools that I'm aware of. By all means, if there are any that you're aware of, post them in the comments below. I'm sure it would be a great resource for anyone. I'm not a Mac user, so I don't really know them. But there are tools such as PixInsight and Nebulosity available for Mac, but they tend to be rather expensive. And people likely won't have them, and if you can't afford them, that's probably a problem. But the majority of phot photographers will have Lightroom and Photoshop, so this is why we're focusing on this to uh, do our stacking. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm using Lightroom 2015 and Photoshop uh, CC 2017. I know the stacking works in all versions of Photoshop CC. I'm not sure if it works in older versions, as I've never I'd never used this before starting to use CC a couple of years back. So, again, if you know if it works, please post in the comments below. I'm sure people would love to know about it, if that they can use their older version of Photoshop to do this. So, um, this demo, uh, we'll be doing some pre-processing first in Lightroom. We'll be adjusting the raw images that we shot first, removing vignetting, adjusting white balance, removing any noise reduction or anything, before exporting them into Photoshop for the final stacking. So, we're ready to get started. As you can see here, I've already imported my photos into Photoshop, or sorry, into Lightroom. I've got 27 uh, exposures. I started off with 45. I've removed... Um, I shot a total of 45, but I manually filtered out any of the shots that had uh, any star trailings, clouds blowing through, and any other anomalies that would hurt my final quality of my image. I kept only the best of my image, and I'm left with these 27. So, uh, we're going to start the process. So, first, you need to select all your images. So, Control or Command A to select all, then pick one that's somewhere in the middle. That will be representative of all your images, and hit the Develop module. Now, as you can see on this image, you can see the Pleiades cluster, you can see some of the nebulosity. It's not very bright, but you can definitely see it's there. And as you zoom in, you can see there's quite a bit of background noise here. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not, it's not great. This was what we'll be taking care of by stacking. So, the 
first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all noise reduction and sharpening is disabled. So down here, let's go down our panel to the detail panel. Make sure that sharpening is disabled. Luminous noise reduction is turned off, and that it should be. And remove all color noise reduction. There's a lot of fine detail and contrast and nebulosity. And this sharpening and noise reduction can actually alter it. And you want to try to keep your image as pure as you possibly can. So this is why you want to remove all this noise reduction. So now we can start with our adjustments. The first adjustment we're going to take care of is white balance. As you can see, this is pretty blue. It's uh, partly because it was shot at a fairly cold temperature of like 3650 Kelvin. Um, and partly because of the light pollution, since this was taken near a city, so there's a lot of glow in the sky. And we want to try to neutralize this with the white balance as much as possible. You could try just doing an auto white balance, but in many cases I find it warms it up too much and gives it almost that too much of an orangey glow. So I actually like to just keep it on as shot and do the manual adjustment. In order to do this, increase your vibrance and your saturation sliders to 100. As you can see, this is now really, really blue. So at this end of the scale, you have complete blue. At that end of the scale, you have a lack of blue completely, and you have it all red and green that gives you this orange tint. What you want to do is find a spot somewhere in between here where you seem to have a good balance of blue and orange. And I'm kind of liking here around 4,900. I think that this works out well for this image. Yours will vary. This is very, very dependent on the sky conditions at the time you shot, the camera you used, your white balance setting on your camera. My numbers will not be your numbers. You really need to experiment with this to find what looks best for you. Now, this looks terrible right now, obviously, because uh, vibrance and saturation are turned up all the way. Once you've found a good balance, you need to reset these two. You can do that by either double clicking on the label or on the actual slider itself. Now, as you can see, this is much more neutral, much all that blue in the background is gone, but you still have some nice blue details in the stars and in the nebulosity around it. So good. White balance is now complete. Now we move on to the next step of the processing, which is your vignetting. You can see the vignetting around the edges here, but you can really see it in your navigator pane. A lot of times adjusting for vignetting, you'll actually want to look here instead, because this will give you a better representation in your full screen white. So to adjust vignetting, the first step you'll do is you'll increase your contrast. Go to 100%, then down here to your tone curve, and go a strong contrast. So right now it's very dark. So I'm going to increase exposure a little bit. Ah, there we go. Now you can see, you can really, really see the contrast between the dark areas and the vignette and the actual foreground of the image. So now we want to adjust this. Let's go down to our lens correction tab. Just as an aside here, don't use this would actually clean up your vignetting correctly, but it will also distort your image a little bit as it tries to do your lens profile correction. Unless you have absolutely 100% perfect tracking on your mount, I would suggest never to do this as it will screw up your stacking. So leave this off and we're going to manually adjust the vignetting here. So let's try to increase this brightness on the vignetting. Obviously, the midpoint is not set properly. This is going to take a lot on the midpoint. Uh, maybe a little much. 33. Again, this is another setting where my numbers mean absolutely nothing. 
unless you're using the exact same camera and lens that I am, this will mean nothing to you at all. You really have to experiment. Look here, in your, especially in your navigator. You'll really see the difference the vignetting makes. Adjusting your midpoint. Uh, that's a pretty extreme setting for me on the midpoint. But that looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty even across the image. So I'm going to leave it there. So now, oh, and here also, if you have, if you find that you have any chromatic aberration around stars, often very, very bright stars will have a big blue ring around them. Now's the time to get rid of them with your defringe. So the purple hue, not so much the green hue, but especially purple. In my case, mine is pretty good. The only place there's blue is around the bright blue stars that should have them, so I'm going to leave mine. Okay, now the vignetting has been adjusted. You want to reset your contrast. So on your tone curve, you can right-click anywhere on the curve and go to Reset All, and then reset the contrast by double-clicking on it and exposure by double-clicking on it. And there you go. You have a nicely pre-processed image that's nice and neutral in the background and ready to be stacked. Now that we have this image done, we want to apply these settings to the rest of the images in the collection. So with them all selected, you want to hit your sync button so you can synchronize all these develop settings across all your images. Hit your sync button, make sure to check all so that everything is checked and go synchronize. Now all your images are ready for stacking. And back to the library. So now with all the images stacked, the next step is to send them to Photoshop. By right clicking, edit in, and going to merge to panorama in Photoshop. This doesn't sound very intuitive at first, but it really is because the panorama tool in Photoshop will align all the images for you, which I'm going to show you in the next step. I'm going to pause this for a second here while I do this because this is going to take a couple of minutes and we'll be right back once everything opens up in Photoshop. And we're back now in Photoshop. As you can see, we have now opened the Photo Merge uh, dialog box. This is the exact um, tool that you would use if you wanted to create a panorama. Uh, all the images are already in there. Yeah, I mean, you could do this manually. You could, you could forego the pre-processing in Lightroom completely and just open all your images here and just do this. But really, I strongly recommend doing the pre-processing in Lightroom because it makes a huge difference on the final process. Anyway, for settings here, make sure that your layout is auto and remove the checkbox from the blend images together. You don't want any blending to happen here. You just want them to align the different layers. Each one of these images will be loaded to a different layer and then Photoshop will align them to each other, which is what you want. And here we go. It opens one. It opens every image to a separate layer. And then it will turn around and eventually just completely uh, align all the images. This will take several minutes. The more images you have in the stack, the longer it will take. Again, I'll pause this and let it do its thing. And I'll be back once the stacking or the import is complete. And we're back. As you can see, we have all our images imported to separate layers in Photoshop, and Photoshop has gone through and aligned every single one of these images. As can you can see along the edge here by this, oh, let me get rid of my crop tool, by this slightly uneven edging, which is just basically stacking, uh, stacking issues as things were being aligned. So now we have all our images imported. We have our next step is to stack them into a smart object. You can do this by selecting the top one, 
by clicking on it. Scroll down to the bottom, hold your shift key, click that one to select everything, right click, and go to convert to smart object. Again, this is a process that'll take a couple of minutes. So we'll, uh, again, longer depending on how many images you have and the speed of your computer and all that. So I'm going to pause the video for uh, until this is done and we'll be right back. And the combining of the smart object is now complete. As you can see, all the layers have now been combined into one object, which is the smart object. Now comes the point where we stack. Make sure that your smart object layer is selected. Go to your layers menu to smart objects, right here, down to stack mode, and select median. This is another one of these processes that takes a little while, depending on how many images you have, how fast your computer is. I have a reasonably fast computer, so this doesn't take too long, but uh, I've done this on my laptop and regretted having to do it because I basically walked away and came back 20 minutes later, and it was still cranking through. So this shouldn't take more than a, about another minute or so on mine. Uh, I'll pause again and we'll see the results when I get back. And I could have gotten away without pausing because it literally ended about two seconds after I hit pause. Now our image is stacked. If we zoom right in, we can see that this background has very little noise compared to here. In my history, I will step back, oh, I'll step back one step you can see what, oh, that was kind of a bad frame. It had some very elongated stars. I must have missed that one. But that's okay. If there's just one, once stacked, you can see all that background noise has disappeared. And the stretch star data, which was only in one frame of the image, was removed because it was detected as being noise. So before stacking and after stacking. Look how clean that is compared This is really, really quite an amazing process. And normally people will put dark frames to remove noise, and which is a perfectly valid way of doing it. Uh, it is kind of the recommended way, but this just to go sh to show you what kind of effect you can get from stacking without any kind of calibration frame. So now that you've stacked your image, it's time to flatten it. So now you want to flatten the smart object into a single image on a frame. And there we go, we have our stacked image. So we'll take our crop tool and go and crop those bad edges out so that we have nothing but, oops, mess that up. Good data, kind of center that a little bit better. Yeah, I'm gonna crop, crop it even a little bit more. Maybe give it a little bit of rotation just because like that. And there we go. Ah, let's do a little level adjustment here to bring up that, bring that black point down. And there we go. We have a nice, very clean background and we have the Pleiades cluster. And while this is not a processing video, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stretch just so we can see what kind of data that we actually have in this image. So I'm going to set my anchor points at 2020 20 and 1111. 11. Let's select the edge of this, stretch it out for an initial stretch. And there we go. So from here to here. And from then, this would be the point where you would start doing your regular post-processing, which I hope to do in another video sometime in the future. So that's it for now. I hope that you find this video was informative. Uh, it's going to be about 20 minutes in length. So uh, I hope you, you like it. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, post in the comments below. Hit up my website at darkartsastro.ca and 
I have my blog. I have other uh, tutorials. I have reviews. And come check it out. All right. So until next time, keep those eyes and lenses pointed up.